So the X-Men are finally coming home. For a long time, Fox Studios, 20th Century Fox, have had their little hands, their little fingers on the X-Men franchise. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the way that history happened, I'm just going to make it short for that. Back in the day, Marvel didn't have their own movie studio. They weren't making a lot of money. In fact, they were in bankruptcy. So they decided to license out their characters to companies like Fox for X-Men, Sony for Spider-Man, Hulk for NBC Universal. I think it was just Universal then. My point being that since that time period in the 90s, Marvel has been reacquiring the rights to their characters back. They got Daredevil, Punisher, Ghost Rider, Blade. They now have... I mean, they got Spider-Man in a temporary partnership. It, it might be temporary, or they might stretch it out for long-term, 50-50. The X-Men and the Fantastic Four and Deadpool are the latest characters to come back to Marvel. Oh my god, this is like the opposite of drama. Hype! Uh, for a while, the modern history of, X of the publication of X-Men has been really... I don't want to say sketchy. There's been a lot of tensions between the company Marvel and Marvel Entertainment and the fans, given that Marvel has either excised some of their characters from the comic books and other media, or and it pretty much Marvel has not been emphasizing the use of their X Men characters after 2008. Since the Marvel Cinematic Universe came about, there was no mention of X Men because those characters were licensed out to another studio. We'll call it a Marvel Fox movie because it wasn't a Marvel Marvel movie or a Marvel Studios movie if you want to put it that way. I think now with X-Men and Fantastic Four coming back, it's not just going to affect the movies. I want to make a lot of suggestions over the course of the next 10 minutes, 8 to 10 minutes that I'm going to keep talking. First suggestion to Marvel Entertainment and to Marvel Animation, bring back the 90s X-Men cartoon. This week, People just realized, and they just saw in theaters, that Teen Titans, the original Teen Titans, are coming back to the small screen. The animated version from 2003, I think. Yeah, the... I think it... I, I don't know who produced the show. It might have been Bruce Tim. I am not sure. But the original Teen Titans, the ones that everybody loves and recognizes the most. Th those animated counterparts are recognized more so on television than the comics. Or the other versions, like the live-action series. I don't want to go into that. I just want to tell you that the animated Teen Titans are coming back when it comes to DC. Young Justice is coming back when it comes to DC. So I wonder if the ball will be in Marvel's court, Marvel Animation's court, for them to realize, hey, we're getting... Our company is getting these film rights back, and we have money, and we have merchandise. We, we can merchandise these characters. We can advertise these characters again. So maybe the best course of action would be to bring back the 90s cartoon and modernize it. And I mean modernize it in the sense of new characters. Back then it was the 90s. X-23 did not exist. Hope Summers did not exist. All those characters and concepts like X-Men, Messiah War, Messiah Complex, and Second Coming for those of you who read the comics. Um, basically, X-Men stories have always been written like X-Men stories and that everyone, the readers and the viewers of those cartoons are equal. X-Men has a long history of being about discrimination between humans and mutants, mutants fighting among mutants. In, in one comic, The Age of Apocalypse, Magneto, uh, Magneto forms the X-Men after Professor Xavier dies when they're in, in their early days. Apocalypse takes over the world and... Oh my god, just imagine if Marvel Animation could adapt that story. The Age of Apocalypse getting an animated adaption. Whether it's the 90s cartoon or whether it's its own thing. I wish Marvel would start that kind of lineup with their animations where they adapt famous storylines. Not doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be 100%, but you know, kind of like the way DC does. Because Marvel could really tap into that market for their older fans and they could get younger and new fans introduced into the world of X-Men the way the 90s kids were. But like I was saying before, bring back the 90s X-Men cartoon. That's the first thing they should do. I mean, you know, I'm not giving orders. I'm just giving suggestions to Marvel and Disney. That 90s cartoon made Marvel's franchise when they were on the verge of bankruptcy from the Spider-Man clone saga comics and their inability to keep their company afloat. Uh, you know, you can read the history of all that online. 
But my point is that like this would be the beginning of something great. Now for the video games, if Marvel wants to re-inject life into Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, one thing they should do is put the X-Men characters back into the Marvel vs. Capcom series. And I know I have heard that the ban for X-Men characters across all mediums have been lifted even before this Disney Fox deal. Well, before it was finalized, because today it just got finalized. So, I, I don't know. I'm just telling you right now. Putting the X-Men back into the games, and not just one or two games, but all of them, now that you have your character rights back, now that these, now that this deal is going to go through, if it were up to me, I'd make a Marvel vs. Capcom collection featuring every versus game in the series stemming from X-Men Children of the Atom. I believe the order is X-Men Children of the Atom, X-Men vs. Street Fighter, Marvel Super Heroes, Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter, Marvel vs. Capcom 1, and Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I'd make a giant-sized collection of Marvel vs. Capcom games going all the way to MVC 2, and they, and they would have to be more than just arcade perfect. They'd have to have a strong gallery of concept art that we have never seen, um, they'd have to have, in, I don't know if they could have interviews with people at Marvel and Capcom. They'd have to have all sorts of cool bonuses, of cool gallery stuff. And they'd have to have really good working online, because I know Capcom's fighting game division haven't been doing well in terms of the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection. I don't know what's going on with their fighting games at Capcom, but having the X-Men back makes things so unique for them cuz cuz let's be honest no one ever thought this deal would come through no one ever no one thought that this deal would even happen i remember there was a video i think it was by comic book cast 2 once where stan lee made vague references to marvel working on getting the x men and fantastic four back oh and that's another thing i'll talk about fantastic four shortly x men though okay i've already talked about the animation the video games the comics the last time I read an X-Men comic that wasn't 90s X-Men was Second Coming with Hope Summers and Cable being a father. I want to see that again, but I want it to be X-Men-like. When I say X-Men-like, I just mean that I don't want comics to reflect real-world politics. But I'll talk about whether or not they, if they decide to do so, because, you know, comics have been very polarizing lately. I think what they should do for X-Men in terms of issues and comic books, they need to make it feel like X-Men in which all the readers who are Muslim, LGBT, black, brown, white, even white, where they're, they've all been discriminated against at one point in their lives. Everyone who picks up an X-Men book is equal when they see mutants being discriminated against even from within their own kind. So there is a way to do it if you want to reflect real-world politics, you just can't abuse it. I think the best way to go about it... The best way to go about real-world politics in an X-Men comic... Um, introduce a lover for mutant girls or mutant guys. Introduce a human-mutant relationship and the struggles they go through to keep that relationship. Don't emphasize it just because it is a relationship. Think about the qualities that you could um, that you could address comics need to be comics need to be great they're not I, I don't like that marvel has tried to excise the characters from the publication we know that they've been doing that even though they don't say it outright that's why fantastic four the comic book was canceled during the secret wars crossover and that's another thing i've already covered x-men animations comics games i mean as a cliff note type of thing real quick fantastic four the last good Fantastic Four cartoon was World's Greatest Heroes in 2007-2008. I think they made that for the Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer movie. They wanted to promote the movie, and they wanted the movie to promote the cartoon back before Marvel Studios was formed. So I think the best way to go about Fantastic Four, d don't make an X-Men movie first. Make a Fantastic Four movie first. You have less characters. It's Stan Lee's first comic, I think. Yeah, Fantastic Four in 1961? Somebody can tell me in the comments below if I got that wrong. I am a big Fantastic Four fan. I, I don't read the comics as much. The only good run, personally, I think has been Jonathan Hickman. He knows how to write Doom. He knows how to write the characters. Uh, everything that Mark Millar does with the Fantastic Four... Yeah, he, he, he's not that good. Not that good at that. The Marcus of Doom storyline was a waste of time for me. 
But Jonathan Hickman, get Jonathan Hickman to write the Fantastic Four comic. And for a cartoon, I, Fantastic Four has never been good in animation aside from World's Greatest Heroes. I, I feel like Marvel could modernize the family first theme that they've got going on there. Um, I don't know. Fantastic Four, make a movie first and then make a cartoon. I, I, I'm a little undecided on the way I feel about animation with those characters. Okay, I already talked about comics, cartoons, real quick, and a movie. The uh, In Spider-Man Homecoming, Marvel had this little weird subplot where they sell a tower, the Avengers Tower, that's right, to an unknown party, at least unknown to the viewers. What if Fantastic Four, what if that's Fantastic Four for, uh, to create the Baxter Building? What if the characters, uh, Tony Stark, the Avengers, what if the Avengers Tower is now being sold to Re Reed Richards? I was going to say Richards Reed. That's, uh, that's weird. I'm sorry. I, like, I'm talking so fast because I'm so excited for this. What if the Fantastic Four will be making an appearance sometime in 2019 or 2020? Maybe by the time the next Spider-Man movie comes out. Far from home. Uh, a lot of people are saying that they're going to make some kind of nod to Fantastic Four or at least X-Men in the Avengers 4 movie, but I don't think they will. I, I don't think there's any time for that. I think the movie is almost done. Like, th they've already shot everything. I don't know. But I think we're going to see an MCU where Tony Stark, Captain America, Thor, they're dead. The original Avengers roster is gone because, you know, you can't... Uh, actors age. And you, the Marvel Universe can only go on for so long. I think we're going to be in a world where the Fantastic Four and the X-Men and Spider-Man have to survive without the Avengers forming together, without most of them being around. That would make for a really cool story, actually, if you ask me. Oh, and one more thing I didn't mention when I was talking about X-Men and video games. It's not just purely Capcom games. X-Men Legends 2. This game that you have been watching, I love it. I love everything in this game. And I'm using the PSP version, by the way. I'm, I'm, I emulated the PSP version. I'm playing an emulated version, I mean. And I love it. I love being able to play as Nate Gray, the X-Man, the half-brother of Cable. I love being able to play as Dark Phoenix, Jean Grey, Deadpool. I love everything about playing Marvel Ultimate Alliance in an X-Men format. Once this deal... I think this deal has gone through, but they need time to integrate everything. Since Disney is getting a lot more properties than just X-Men and Fantastic Four and Deadpool. Once this deal is completely done, like, once everything is settled in by 2019 or 2020, I think Marvel should get on the phone with Activision and ask them to re-release X-Men Legends 1 and X-Men Legends 2. And I, I think the Marvel Ultimate Alliance games, I don't know if they're still in the store or if they just got taken down or whatnot, I think more emphasis should be placed on those games, because I would love a Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 with a reunion of X-Men, Fantastic Four, Guardians of the Galaxy, Spider-Man, the newer characters, or the characters newly brought to light, to the surface, and the original OG top-tier characters, because it was in, in the 90s, it used to be X-Men, Fantastic Four, and Spider-Man, and sometimes the Avengers, but they were never that popular outside their own book. Now, there are multi-million dollar franchises. So yeah, I think Marvel should bring the X-Men Legends games back into the, into the PlayStation Store, the Xbox Store, Steam. I would love to mod the hell out of those games. I love th this RPG. Hell, give me an X-Men Legends 3 that focuses on characters other than, uh, than Apocalypse, Magneto, Professor Xavier. Give me Selene, the Hellfire Club. Give me Dark Beast. Give me, I don't know, the, the bad guys involved in the Weapon X experiment. Give me the Shi'ar. Give me... I don't know. <sighs> X-Men does have a lot of other villains. I, I just can't name them all on the, off the top of my head at the moment. Mr. Sinister. We saw him in X-Men Legends 2, but kind of briefly. You know, cutscene in, cutscene out, and one boss battle. Give me other villains besides Magneto and the Brotherhood of X-Men. Uh, the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. My bad. Cameron Hodge. Cameron Hodge. There's one. There's one more. Oh, and suck it, Comcast. You don't get those properties now. <laughs> Oh, I'm so grateful. I'm glad that I'm living in a time where the cartoons and the comics I grew up with are now multi-million dollar franchises that a lot of people can get access to and see the most out of. I mean, I'm, I'm probably going to see theme parks, theme parks next, just like Nintendo's doing a theme park. 
we're probably getting more than just a Guardians of the Galaxy ride. Imagine an X-Men ride or a Spider-Man ride or a Fantastic Four ride. Imagine that. When I was growing up, I used to see some rides where I live. Well, I, I, where I live somewhat. I used to see animations play. Imagine getting a cartoon episode of some of the Marvel shows playing while you're waiting 20 minutes, 30 minutes in line, in which case, you know, give me a line to wait in because I will watch the crap out of those animated productions while waiting on the ride uh, at a theme park. That would be so awesome. A Marvel theme park. Oh, my God. I didn't even think of that early on. Have I mentioned that I told Comcast just now to get fucked? Fucking awesome. I don't like to swear that much in my videos, but, but this is a special occasion. So... In conclusion, I am looking forward to the future of X-Men. I grew up with the X-Men. I have some of the comics. I have Extinction Agenda, Executioner Song, the trade paperbacks. I love the X-Men to life and death. I enjoy the comics. I enjoy everything. I wonder if Disney will re-release the X-Men animated series on Blu-ray. And if enough people buy the Blu-ray, they'll make more episodes. That'd be wonderful. It would be the 90s coming back in a modern conte contextual style. That'd be great. Oh, my God. I love the future. That's it. I love the future. Scarlet Witch. Road. X-Men. Jean Grey. The mission has commenced. 